Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels, and welcome to a very special episode of Historic Travels. Before we begin today's video, I'd just like to take a moment to wish all of you watching this video a very happy holiday season. I hope you all have a great Christmas, happy Hanukkah, and happy holidays everybody. Now, for this very special episode of Historic Travels, I don't know if you guys saw it, but yesterday I did a poll where I asked all of you if you guys would like me to review another Brightside video. But you see, considering how much I suffered and you all saw me suffer during the last Brightside video review, I'm sure, and I mean, I'm confident that you guys said no. We don't want you to do that again, Sam. You don't need to put yourself through that mental torment again. And it's also the holiday season. We wouldn't do that to you during this special time of year. I'm sure that's what you guys said, right? Right? All right, well, let's check the poll together. Out of 1,300 votes, 81% of you said, yes, we love to watch you suffer. Uh... All right, all right. I mean, come on, guys. It's the holiday season. Why are you wanting me to go through all that? Although, I guess if I was in your all shoes and, you know, a YouTuber you all watch asked you guys if y'all wanted him to go through some type of mental torment to watch videos, I would probably say yes, too, because... I'm sure it's very funny for all of y'all to watch me have mental breakdowns or rage in these videos. I would probably do the same thing. So, okay, since 81% of you want me to go through this mental hell again, fine, we will do it. It is my gift to all of you for this holiday season to go through another bright side Titanic video. One hour later. Oh, hey guys, uh, I totally wasn't procrastinating or anything, waiting an hour to start the Bright Side review video or anything. Um, sure, uh, just ignore what that voice just said. I wasn't doing that. All right, guys, well, hey, <laughs> without any further ado, let's begin the Bright Side review video. <music> Everybody. Okay, so once again, welcome back to my computer room or office, you know, this is where I edit most of the videos you all watch on the Historic Travels channel. Um, you may have seen this room before if you've watched my other Brightside Titanic review videos. If you haven't, I will include links to those videos in the description below, so feel free to go and watch those. I also film in this room videos for my other channel, Historic Hangout. It's basically a relaxing channel where me and my friends hang out, we play video games and just laugh and have fun. It's a lot more of a chill out channel, so if you would like to watch those videos, I will include a link to that channel in the description below, so feel free to subscribe to that. We'd love to have you there. And okay, guys, so as you can see, I've got Brightside pulled up on my computer screen. You should be able to see it now. And after careful deliberation and a lot of suffering, I selected the video that we're going to be watching in today's video. The video is going to be called, or the video is, What Would Happen If the Titanic Met the Kraken? What would happen if the Titanic met the Kraken? So I'm not sure how the Kraken relates to the Titanic story at all, you know, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, you know, it's just a hunch, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but according to this, the Titanic is being surrounded by giant Kraken tentacles and dragged underwater and everything, and um, I'm getting very, very strong clickbaity vibes from this thumbnail, what do you all think, and from the title as well, I think this is very clickbaity. And judging by the fact that this video has 5.4 million views makes me absolutely die inside. And I haven't even watched the video yet, so. I've already got the video pulled up in another tab, so, uh, alright guys, just, just remember, I'm suffering through this video for you all, so just, um, if you wouldn't mind, guys, please give this video a like. It really helps out, and it would mean a lot, especially with what I'm doing here. I really don't want to do this. Ugh. Doing this for all of you. Doing this for all of you. Okay, let's just... Let's just get through this. We can do this. We can do this. Okay. Okay. Whew. Let's go. It was just a couple of hours before midnight. Some of the 2,200 passengers of a large and luxurious ocean liner 
were still partying in the beautiful first class lounges. The rest were asleep in their beds. Okay, so this isn't really a rage. This is just something I want to point out. In 1912, on ocean liners like the Titanic, it was more traditional for people to go to bed early and wake up early. There were still people who would stay up later and have small little gatherings and everything. But for the most part, most of the passengers on the Titanic, at least leading up to the time of the iceberg impact, were already asleep. You know, it's not like today on modern cruise ships where people stay up all night partying. You know, just that didn't happen back in 1912, at least not at a large scale. So this isn't really a rage. This is just a small little thing that I just wanted to point out, you know. So anyway. Some of them in spacious cabins filled with paintings and decorated with ornate carvings. Others in tiny rooms below sea level. All of these people had only... Did this video just claim that the Titanic's third class passengers were in cabins below the waterline? Like, seriously, like, what the heck? Like, no. How can you guys, like, seriously, just take 30 seconds and look at the Titanic's plans and you will see that, no, the third class passengers weren't put below the water lines. I don't think there were any cabins below the water line. The lowest deck that had staterooms on it was G deck, I believe. And that was just, that was the last deck below the water. But that's where a good chunk of the third class cabins were. And they were, there were third class cabins on G deck, F deck, E deck. Like, how hard is it for you guys to take two seconds and look at the Titanic's plans? I mean, it's not that hard. And by the way that this video describes this, we're 22 seconds in, by the way. We're 22 seconds in. I'm already annoyed. Like, this video implies that the third-class passengers were treated terrible on the Titanic, and they had all these awful accommodation stuff. And look, here's the thing you have to remember. By today's standards, sure, the third-class cabins and all of that on Titanic would not be up to par. It wouldn't be legal to operate the Titanic with cabins like that. I mean, this, the quality of life and everything, it's not good by modern-day standards. However, in 1912 standards, by 1912 standards, I mean, third-class passengers were treated very well on the Titanic. You know, they had good food. The cabins were small, but they were still comfortable. And, you know, it's a lot of third-class passengers on Titanic said that traveling third class on Titanic was similar to traveling second class on other ships. The third class passengers were treated very well on the Titanic by 1912 standards. It's not like they were on a prison ship or something. I mean, like, what the... <laughs> we're 22 seconds in, guys. <sighs> Moving on. One thing in common. On that chilly April night, all of the... Don't subscribe to Brightside. Don't subscribe to Brightside, please. And we're heading from Southampton in England to New York City. The ship was wait, called. Wait, hang on, the I gotta, I, I gotta rewind. Hang on. Okay. People had only one thing in common. On that chilly April night, all of them were heading from Southampton in England to New York City. The ship was called the Titanic. <gasps> they actually got the name of the ship right. Holy crap. Now, uh, one other thing I do want to clarify, while it is true that most of the passengers on the Titanic were traveling from Southampton to New York, you can't forget the Titanic also made two other stops before it headed out into the Atlantic. It stopped in Cherbourg and it stopped in Queenstown and picked up passengers there. So just another small thing to keep in mind. It's not like most of the passengers on the Titanic were from Southampton, but there were also passengers from other places. So including Molly Brown. Molly Brown came aboard in Cherbourg, if I'm not mistaken. I'm I'm like 99% certain I'm right. But yeah, anyway, so uh, not 100% true there. Or not 100% not accurate. Let's just say that. Moving on. And at that time, it was considered unsinkable. <sighs> the Titanic wasn't considered unsinkable. I mean, sure, the word unsinkable was thrown around, but to most of the people on Titanic, it simply meant that the ship was safe. The White Star Line ever, they only had one ad that ever used the word unsinkable, but the ad was saying things like, she's as unsinkable as we can make a ship, not that she's 100% unsinkable. It's not like people in 1912 had this religious faith in the ship or anything, you know, just according to the White Star Line, everybody on board, they just thought that the Titanic was a very safe ship, not that she couldn't sink under any circumstances, that that wasn't true at all. Moving on. At the very beginning of the journey, the liner nearly collided with... <laughs> We're 39 seconds in, and I've already paused this so many times. Okay, so according to this image, the first two funnels on the Titanic were fake, 
and the last two were real. Mm. Are you sure about that? You sure about that? So for those of you who don't know, the first three funnels in the Titanic were the ones that let out smoke from the Titanic's boiler rooms. The fourth funnel was technically fake, but it did still serve, uh, it did have functions, you know, it let out steam from the galley and stuff like that. So it didn't expel smoke from the boiler rooms, but it did do other things. So it wasn't technically fake, but it didn't let out smoke from the boiler rooms. So anyway, but according to this image, the first two funnels are fake and the back two are real. Pretty sure that's not true. Anyway, we're 39 seconds in and uh, I've got almost eight minutes of footage already. So hope you guys are having fun with this. Oh, gosh. Okay, moving on. The steamship. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind by ten seconds because I keep pausing it. Then yeah. New, the ship was called the Titanic, and at that time it was considered unsinkable. At the very beginning of the journey, the liner nearly collided with the steamship New York. Luckily, the Titanic managed to pass by the other vessel with several feet to spare. A common sigh of. Okay, so according to this, the New York has three funnels. Pretty sure it only had two, and. The other thing is this image implies that that collision happened while the Titan or the near collision happened while the Titanic was out at sea. No, it happened in Southampton as the Titanic was leaving. It wasn't like <sighs> 47 seconds into the video, almost 9 minutes of footage. I'm doing this for you guys. Relief escaped the passengers crowding the liner's decks. Little did they know what was awaiting them in the near future. Several days later, when the ship was already in the North Atlantic Ocean, 370 miles away from Newfoundland. 400 miles south of Newfoundland, but okay. The unthinkable happened. At about 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, those who were still awake were knocked over by some mysterious and powerful force. Okay, so most of the passengers on Titanic, you know, I mean, granted, it all did depend on where you were on the ship, but most of the passengers on Titanic said that when the Titanic struck the iceberg, it felt just like a little bump, like a boom, like that. Like um, Eva, Hart's, um, Eva Hart's mother said it was like a train pulling into a station, just a jerk. Now, granted, this would depend on where you were on the ship. You know, if you were in an area that was directly beside where the iceberg struck the ship, of course, you would feel the impact pretty strongly and it could knock you out of your bed. But like this animation here, this looks like it's showing like the upper decks, like the first class areas and stuff like that. And from here, it would have been like a little shake or a little vibrate. It wouldn't have, de it definitely wouldn't have been this boom, boom and knocking people out of their chairs and going flying and all that other stuff. Like it wasn't like that at all. And... <laughs> Did you like my fake little, ah. but uh, anyway, so as I said, it just depended on where you were on the ship. But for the most part, it was just a mild bump. It wasn't like a big, oh my gosh, what was that? Ah, we went flying and all that. Moving on. Passengers who were already in their beds got catapulted to the floor. Again, depending on where you were. In total confusion. Mon Wait, what? Be mysterious and powerful. I, I think it's funny that um, I'm having to pause the video so much that I'm missing things that he's saying and I'm having to backtrack, but anyway. Force. Passengers who were already in their beds got catapulted to the floor. Screams and total confusion. No, there wasn't any type of large scale screams or panicking. I mean, I'm sure there were some people going, holy crap, what the heck was that? Especially in the areas closer to the Berg. But there wasn't like this mass panic and confusion and everything. I mean, didn't the collision only last around 10 seconds? I mean, it would have it would have been enough to make people go, and go, what the heck was that? Not, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, run, we're going to die. You know, like people didn't know that. Yeah, they didn't know how serious it was. It was just a mild bump for the most part. Months before the disaster struck, a ginormous chunk of ice had broken away from a glacier in southwest Greenland. It was made of the snow that had fallen about 100,000 years ago when mammoths were still roaming the planet. When the iceberg just started its journey, it was a huge thing, almost 1,700 feet long. It also weighed 75 million tons. But then it floated much further to the south than normal, right into the area the Titanic had to cross on its way to North America. Even after melting into the water for months, the iceberg still weighed an impressive one and a half million tons. Its top part was towering over the water for almost 100 feet. Even so, it looked harmless next to the massive ocean liner, but only at first glance. 
What? Wait, wait, wait. Did they just say that the iceberg looked harmless to those on the Titanic? Did I really just hear that? So this is implying that the people on the Titanic saw the iceberg and were like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's just an iceberg. It's not harmless. It's fine. It's fine. Is that really what this video just implied here? No. Any iceberg is considered extremely hazardous to ships. And the Titanic's crew didn't see the berg until around 30 seconds or so before the collision, and they tried to take evasive action. It's not like they... <sighs> That's not... Moving on. What people saw was just a tiny part of a jumbo piece of ice. The largest part of any iceberg is hidden under the surface okay, that's with a mere one-tenth visible above the water. The Titanic iceberg wasn't an exception. The moment the ship collided with it, the vessel was doomed. Unable to divert its course, it crashed into the ice, rupturing at least five of its hull compartments. They Technically six, but okay, I'll let that slide. <clears throat> they immediately started to fill with water, which then flooded each succeeding compartment. The front of the ship started to sink. This raised the back part almost vertically into the air. And then, with a deafening roar, the liner broke in half. The I have to say, that was a pretty good sinking animation for bright side standards. Like, I'm not praising it or anything. I'm just saying that compared to most of the sinking crap I've seen on this channel, that's not the worst. So that's as far... That's as far into that as I'm going to go. The rest is history. But what if what we know about the disaster is not true? What if the ship hadn't been wrecked by an iceberg? How about you guys get your history right before you start saying things like uh, twisting around things? Like, what if what we know about this story isn't true? Well, a lot of stuff you say isn't true. You get so many details wrong. I... What if it had been something more treacherous and way more alive that sank the Titanic? Far, far beneath the surface, in the ocean's dim, dark depths, a shadow lurks. Imagine an enormous creature, round, flat, and full of arms, or rather, powerful tentacles. It resembles a giant squid or octopus, but much, much bigger. What did that say? It's just round, what, flat, what that and full of arms, say? or rather... What if you woke up as the Kraken tomorrow? Other what? Like, <laughs> it resembles a giant squid. Well, how, how does Brightside come up much, with this nonsense? Bigger. Its descriptions go from as long as 10 ships to a mile and a half long. Rumor has it unlucky sailors sometimes mistake the sea monster for an island. But instead of stepping on dry land, they're dragged down into the ocean. These people meet the Kraken. A legendary creature feared by everyone who sets off on Don't a forget Davy Jones. Usually, the Kraken haunts the seas off the coast of Norway through Iceland and all the way to Greenland. Who knows what has brought the beast further away from home? The waters of the North Atlantic are just as chilly, and the creature feels good and... <laughs> so, uh, even in all of this nonsense, uh, I found something to correct. <laughs> Um, so, for the most part, while the Titanic was crossing across, uh, while it was traveling across the Atlantic, the waters around the ship, while not crazy warm, they were a lot warmer than what they were on the night the Titanic sank. Because what you have to remember is, throughout most of the Titanic's maiden voyage, it was traveling through the warm waters of the Gulf Stream. However, on the night that the ship hit the berg, it had just crossed into the freezing waters of the Labrador Current. It's this current that brings the bergs from the northern areas down south. So it's not like the ocean was freezing cold the entire time the Titanic was sailing across the Atlantic. That's just, that's not true. If the temperatures plummeted uh, Sunday evening, you know, I mean, it's just, anyway. Out of all this nonsense, I found something to correct. So uh, moving on. Curious. Once it notices the Titanic, the ship has no chances to escape its attention. Uh -huh. It's dark. That's why those on the ocean liner don't notice the first alarm bells. The water... <laughs> Looks like the Titanic is made is like a wooden ship from that last thing, but whatever. Around the ship starts to bubble. <coughs> if you strain your ears, you can hear bizarre gurgling sounds. If you strain your eyes, you can see thousands of fish and jellyfish rising to the surface. 
they feel something's up down below. But even if someone on the Titanic noticed this hectic activity, they wouldn't have time to get out of the way of the horrifying beast. Its enormous size and super long and strong tentacles turn it into a predator you can't escape. A nine-year-old boy standing on the deck knows nothing about the sea monster. He's just watching countless small islands rising out of the sea very, very slowly. The kid doesn't understand why, but all the blood in his body suddenly runs cold. Hundreds of tiny fish are leaping about in the pools between <coughs> these sandbanks. But soon, they roll off into the water over the sides of the ginormous... Can we stop, please? Uh, I'm legit dying inside watching this. Enormous something. So this legit has nothing to do with Titanic. This has nothing to do with Titanic. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like I'm looking at something from um, the guys that make like Titanic 2 or Titanic 666. You know, they're just, they're using the name Titanic to get views. That's it. This has nothing to do with Titanic at all. And it's just, to me, this is disrespecting, like you're dissing history. You're not respecting the story. You're not respecting those who lost their lives in this terrible tragedy. You're just like, oh, Titanic. Uh, people want to click on Titanic stuff. So let's just make a stupid video. And based on those views, it worked. 5.4 million people have watched this. And of course, that's just going to keep encouraging this. And then seriously, I just, I feel like they're mocking history and it just, it makes me so up. It's not right. It's not right. All right. Several sharp points appear above the surface. The intrigued boy thinks they look like horns. They keep growing thicker and thicker the higher they rise. Okay. So let, let me ask you all this. Okay. Let's say you're this boy. Okay. And you're on a ship and you see these giant tentacles coming up over the side and rising up above the ship. Would you really just stand there and go, oh, or would you take off running? I'm pretty sure if that was small boy, he'd be running to his parents right now. Just saying, just saying. Soon they're towering over the massive Titanic, dwarfing the ship. These horns are the Kraken's dreaded arms. Uh, the boy is paralyzed by fear, but then he spots the monster's eye. It's as big as an elephant. <laughs> it makes the kid come to his senses and dash away, screaming like there's no tomorrow. The boy's shouting attracts people. They gather along the ship's side, trying to spot what scared the child so much. And then they see. First one, then more and more pass. Where are those people standing on the ship? There's not a deck like, like a deck like that. There's not a deck that goes out from the superstructure. Uh, <laughs> on the side of the ship. Moving on. Passengers and crew members lean over the railing to get a better look. They aren't being careless, they're just in shock. Indeed, it's hard to believe your eyes when we tell you a dreaded beast is about to attack the ship you're on. Plus, it's dark, and no one can see clearly what that huge shadow is. But the next several minutes prove it's not a mirage. All of a sudden, the really? creature rises one of its monstrous arms and stretches it toward the vessel. It might very well be longer than the liner's entire hull. Women start screaming and fainting. Men seem to be just as terrified. Those who have managed to keep their heads clear, sweep up kid. You know what? I have an idea. You all enjoy this. I'll be back in a minute. Have fun. I don't have to stand here with this. You guys have fun. This, this, there isn't any history here for me to uh, correct or anything. This is just absolute nonsense. So you know what? You guys can watch this. I'll be back in a few minutes. Bye. Kids and run for shelter. That's when the first powerful hit shakes the vessel. The Kraken's had enough waiting. It's ready for action. Panic engulfs people on board the Titanic. Running around aimlessly and screaming, 
they create chaos that makes the beast even more interesting. <laughs> how many of y'all were raging in the chat about that? <laughs> uh, I'm here to suffer with you guys. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. Normally, the monster just wants to be left alone. It rests deep down on the ocean floor, using its long tentacles to tether itself to the bottom and lay. How do you know what the kraken floor. wants? <laughs> it only rises to the surface when the weather's unusually warm, oh, this is so or when it gets disturbed. The Titanic is probably too massive and loud. It draws the creature out of its slumber. Pretty sure the ship wasn't the blowing its horn in the, the middle of the Atlantic. And sees night. a large glistening boat. Wow, the thing mesmerizes the creature. It holds out one of its tentacles to touch the unusual construction. The material is hard, and the beast wonders if the thing will break when squeezed. Without wasting much time, it wraps several arms around the ship and tries to squish it. Tiny creatures fussing around, falling overboard, and making annoying high-pitched noises start to irritate the Kraken. It's getting angry. Easing its grip, the monster circles the Titanic several times, getting ready for the next attack. This time, the strike is much stronger. It bends the metal and makes it brittle. One more movement of a deaf tentacle, and the ship starts to fill with water. The Kraken retreats, as if to enjoy the results of its efforts. But then, it notices the ship trying to speed up in futile attempts to put some distance between itself and the monster. People on board the Titanic heave a sigh of relief. The beast is nowhere in sight. Little do they know that the Kraken never lets its toys get away. The ship is beginning to slow down. Its rear part is slowly lifting up, and the front is going down underwater. Passengers and crew members are falling over onto the decks. Oh, so, so the Kraken is creating a accurate Titanic sinking scenario or something. I think the camera moved a little bit. Let me fix that. Let me adjust that. I think so the, so the Kraken is creating a somewhat accurate Titanic sinking thing, huh? Is that right? Is that right? Most of them are too scared to make a sound. That's why everything's happening in almost complete eerie silence. Until the ship breaks. Oh, and then the ship breaks in two, just like the real Titanic. Huh, is that really like... <laughs> so the Kraken is just basically the... <laughs> the Kraken just did what the iceberg did, basically. <laughs> this is so stupid. When the Kraken, like... I don't know, pull something from Pirates of the Caribbean where its giant tentacles reach up above the ship and then the Kraken just comes down and splits the ship in two just like in Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, I mean, this just... This, 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 like, I'm critiquing something that is fictional. Like, this just... <laughs> this is just the stupidest thing. Okay, eight minutes and 44 seconds. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're almost done. Okay into two parts under its own weight. The crash is so powerful that it scares away even the Kraken. Oh, really? So, the beast dives back into the ocean, which creates a massive boiling whirlpool in that spot. The suction is dragging what's left of the Titanic to the depths of the ocean. Pretty sure the Titanic, you the know, would, if, if it broke into just like the real one did, the superstructure would collapse and the hull be so compromised, the ship would still sink. So, And you also have to forget, don't forget that the double bottom was still holding the bow and the stern together. So the bow and the stern were still held together by, like, just pretend the bottom parts of my finger are the double bottom. So as the bow went down, it pulled the stern from the double bottom for a bit. So, um... You know, it wasn't just the Kraken going under. You know, there's some actual science behind how the bow and the stern went down. And <sighs> Magic thing here, though. The Kraken isn't even interested in people on board the ship. This creature is content to munch on fish. It doesn't need bigger prey. It's the animal's curiosity that's now pulling the huge ship down to the bottom. Does the majestic liner have any hope? I think you know the answer. The lively mo I legit have no words for what I just watched. I legit have no words for what I just watched. Huh. Well, thank God that's over. Okay, so ultimately, now that I've watched the video, what are my final thoughts on the bright side Titanic Kraken video? Well, honestly... The beginning of the video played out basically just like any other Bright Side Titanic video that I've seen, where they try to tell accurate history about the Titanic, but then they just get 
all of these details wrong, you know? And then the second part of the video is just, I don't even know what to say about that. I mean, it's just, it is just so much nonsense that, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's just, it's just garbage content. You know, that's, that's all I can say about that. It's just absolute. So it's false history and garbage content. And seriously, the stuff that they get wrong, like when they're trying to talk about the accurate stuff, like the third class cabins. I mean, seriously, how hard is it to take a, take 30 seconds and look at the Titanic deck plans? I mean, it legit makes no sense. And it's inexcusable on how they get so much stuff wrong. I mean, anyway, so would I recommend the Bright Side YouTube channel? Absolutely not. They're just a bunch of clickbait, view hungry, nonsense video stuff. So, all right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for watching another Historic Travels Bright Side review video. If you would like to have another one of these videos come out in the future, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. And please, guys, give this video a like. It helps out more than you all can know. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.